On today's Bismarck Bucks Coaches Show, we recap the Bucks' tussle in Tucson with the Sugar Skulls. Plus, this week is the Bucks' final regular season home game against a familiar foe in the Green Bay Blizzard. We preview the Bucks' fourth matchup with Green Bay this season. And another new quarterback has made their way to Bismarck. We learn more about the Bucks' newest field general, Kenyatta Allen. It's all coming up on this week's Bismarck Bucks Coaches Show, which starts right now. Welcome into another episode, everybody. I'm David Sugarman, and this is the Bismarck Bucks Coaches Show. Following a dramatic one-point victory over the Frisco Fighters, some bad news poured in for the Bismarck Bucks. Quarterback Kelly Bryant re-signed with the Toronto Argonauts of the CFL, and the other quarterback on the roster, Caleb Lewis, is was announced that he would be out with a left shoulder injury going into the matchup against Tucson. All that led to the signing of the Bucks' fifth quarterback of the season, Kenyatta Allen, as Bismarck prepared for a road matchup against the Tucson Sugar Skulls this past Saturday. Bucks in Tucson going at it for the first time this season. Bismarck 6-5, Sugar Skulls 2-7 after a Bucks field goal on the opening drive. Tucson quarterback Corey Murphy in his first start making an impression, scrambling away from everybody and backpedaling into the end zone 41 yards later. First of three touchdowns for him. Sugar Skulls up 7-3. Later in the first, Bucks respond. From three yards out, running back Justin Rankin bullies his way in. He had just six yards on the ground on the day, but made that carry count. Bucks up 9-7. Early second quarter. Trouble on the snap. Tucson defensive back Matt Elam takes it away and walks it into the end zone. A missed extra point, but the Sugar Skulls lead 13-9. Later in the second, it's the Sugar Skulls offense once again. This time, running back Mike Jones. A seven-yard tote gets to the edge and gets to the goal line, 20-9. to nine. Sugar Skulls in the driver's seat, and they're not done yet. Under a minute to go in the half, 46 seconds. Saul Murphy go almost the length of the field. Not quite this time. Stumbling, bumbling, spinning, and winning his way into the end zone. His second score of the half, Sugar Skulls up 27-9 going into the break. Little over halfway through the third quarter. New quarterback, Kenyatta Allen, trying to make an impression. Trouble with the snap. Trouble with the rush. No trouble finding Justin Rankin. Seven yards score. Kicks no good. The Sugar Skulls lead is down to 12, though. 27-15. First play of the fourth quarter. Allen. Time to operate. Rifles one in for wideout Raheem Harvey on a 12-yard score. Lead has been trimmed down to six. Next Sugar Skulls drive. Knocking on the door. Murphy runs in a third touchdown of the day to make it 34-21 from two yards out. Under two minutes to go in the fourth. Bucks not showing any quit. Allen again with great protection and a bullet to Andre Williams. An 11-yard touchdown pass, his fifth score in just his third game with the Bucks. 34-27. Bucks need the onside kick. Cody Barber pops it up, and the Bucks come away with it. Ben Moa, the defensive lineman, jumps on it. Bucks have one more chance. Just 30 ticks to go. Just shy of midfield. Allen has to scramble and buy time, but it's worth it. Finds Harvey for a 22-yard completion down to the three. 11 seconds to go. One last chance for Bismarck. Allen under center and never quite got his footing. Rolled the ankle coming down. The clock runs out and the Sugar Skulls hold on to a nail biter 34 27. Here's what the Bucks had to say after the loss. You know, obviously, like I said, it always hurts too, you know, and uh, especially having new pieces to the team, I think that was a big factor in it. But we really can't make no excuses at the end of the day. We just, you know, gotta, we gotta build the camaraderie, you know, especially with new players. 
And um, I think we just we got to keep our head down, keep training, keep practicing like how we you know usually do when we do win. And uh, you know we got to just win out for the rest of the season. Uh, sometimes it's just. Sometimes it's not even little things that you guys could see on TV. Like it's it's some stuff that you guys got to watch on film. You know, it could be like a receiver not running his depth all the way, and then they get caught at the three versus getting in the end zone. And we got to do three or four more plays and probably don't score that drive just because I didn't get the depth. You know, or the other receiver didn't get the depth. It's little things like that. Losing is never fun. It was very disappointing. I mean, we got in the locker room. Everybody said their piece, and like like a. Right now, we're headed and focused on Green Bay. That loss is behind us. Now it's a three-game season, and Green Bay, we're focused on them. Other scores from a busy weekend in the IFL. Frisco gets by Northern Arizona 33-30. Duke City takes down Spokane in a high-scoring affair 68-61. Elsewhere, Arizona handles Sioux Falls 59-33. And the Green Bay Blizzard take down the Iowa Barnstormers 34-26. When familiarity breeds confidence, then the Bucks should have plenty of it going into this week's matchup. For the fourth time this season, the Bucks will take on the Green Bay Blizzard when they welcome Green Bay into the event center this Saturday. The Bucks will be trying to go 4-0 and and get back above 500 in this week's matchup. Taking a look at those Green Bay matchups. The first two were tight games through the fourth quarter. However, the most recent game on June 18th was a 21 point Bucks win. Now plenty has changed for the Bucks since then, especially at the quarterback position. At the time, the Bucks were led by Richard Stametti, and since then we've seen Caleb Lewis, Kelly Bryant, and now Kenyatta Allen all under center. But the 5-5 five and five Blizzard just two spots back of the Bucks with three games to go until the postseason. The sense of urgency is at an all-time high in Bismarck. The playoffs start now. I mean, opposed to the playoffs starting in three, four weeks, our playoffs start right now. So every game is a must-win game. Headed forward, and like I said, Green Bay, we're focused on it, and that's the game that's going that we're going to focus on and get this dub this week. It's not easy to beat a team four times, and like I said, Green Bay's coming off two good wins, good quality wins, and I know they're looking forward to confirm this by in the playoffs too. So yeah, this is going to be a very good game. It's hard to beat a team three times. You know, we have Green Bay coming here for the fourth time, and that's one of the hardest things to do in football is to beat a team four times in a row. You know, so. We just got to, like I said, stay, con you know, concentrate, stay focused, and go out there and get the dub. Green Bay, like I said, we, we beat them three times. They say it's hard to beat them four times, but I don't see why it should be so hard. You know what I'm saying? You, it's like beating up your little brother. You do it all the time. <laughs> time for a short break. When we return, we'll sit down with Bucks head coach Rod Miller. Don't go anywhere. You're watching the Bismarck Bucks Coaches Show. Hey, Bucks fans. If you're planning an outing, birthday, or employee appreciation night, then bring your group out to the Buck Stop for a night of fast-paced, high-scoring football. Your group will receive discounted tickets, options for reserved seating, scoreboard messages, VIP services, swag, and a space to gather during the game. You can also participate in pre-game ceremonies, halftime entertainment, in-game contests, and more. Call 701-595-0771 or visit bismarckbucks.com forward slash tickets. All GA is first come, first serve. We'll see you on the turf. Go Bucks! Everybody needs an off-season, but our announcers have a tough time slowing down. Did you mind if I practice a little bit? Right, I don't really think that. Johnson holds, shoots, he scores! Incredible. For the second time today, Brent has jammed the printer. Lowry's third Carmel roll of the day. That's a bold move. And he drains one. Blind squirrel finds a nut. And back to normal. Staying connected is more important than ever. And we're proud to have connected you when it mattered most. Whether it was working remotely at your new home office or providing cutting edge security and connectivity solutions or connecting you to your customers in new ways. More than ever, your local co-op is here for you. Choose local, choose Beck Connect. Indoor football is back at the event center and the Bismarck Bucks season is right around the corner. The team will be fueled and ready to compete on game days thanks to our 2021 food sponsors. Dine with any of our supporting partners and get a free Bucks ticket to any home game in the 2021 season. Great food and free football. Tickets are first come first serve so get yours now. Call 701-595-0771 for more ticket information and go Bucks!
Welcome back to the Bismarck Buck Coaches Show, everybody. As we are every week, we're happy to be joined by Buck's head coach, Rod Miller. Coach, thanks for joining us. I'm glad to be here. Have to address the quarterback situation. You had two quarterbacks for only two games in Kelly Bryant and Caleb Lewis. Bryant back to the CFL. Right. Lewis nursing a shoulder injury right now. You bring in Kenyatta Allen, your fifth quarterback of the season. How difficult is it to have this much movement and try and find cohesiveness at this point in the season? You know, it's, it's a difficult, tough situation, but we got to fight through it. It is what it is. You know, that's what this league is all about, giving guys opportunities. You know, so when you have two guys have opportunity to move on and move up to higher football, you have to adjust and adapt, you know. And unfortunately, it's happening at the end of the season, which is a crunch time. But, you know, we still got to keep trying to play. We still got a roster of other players that are still hungry. And, you know, we just have to come in and acclimate the new quarterback best we can, fast as we can, so we can try to get victories. We saw Kenyatta Allen make his debut this week. Given that he was working on less than a week's preparation in Bismarck, how would you evaluate his first performance? You know, he has some rust to shake off, but, I mean, you can see he can deliver the football and when he, you know, keeps his footing and things like that. You know, sometimes you do have to shake off, you know, a little rust. I know the guys were teasing him in practice, uh, tell him he was the new Court Warner story coming off the street working <laughs> at grocery stores. So, you know, uh, so we just know that we had to get him acclimated. I think the more time you get in, the better you have to do. I think same as with Caleb and Kelly both came. You know, their first games, you know, they did okay, but still had to get some adjustments. And I think, you know, your biggest adjustments from game one to game two. So, you know, I think Kiyato will be fine, and I think this team will respond wound around him on to come this weekend. Going off of that, with a, once he gets this full week of practice under his belt, how comfortable do you expect him to look in the offense? I think he'll be a lot more comfortable. You know, like I said, live, you can practice, but live action is a lot different. So I think, you know, he has live action. He knows what to expect. He knows what coach's system is. And, you know, now we've got a better chance to accommodate some things that what he can do and fit a package around him a little more detailed. So, you know, we feel confident and comfortable that he will do well this weekend. Looking back at the Tucson game, another close loss. Obviously, you have the new quarterback, but what – other areas that maybe you, you can't uh, give yourself the benefit of the doubt on that you or were you wanted to be better. You know, we got to get better at special teams. You know, we had a penalty on things like about every special teams had another return uh, brought back for penalty. I think that's three. Uh, three of them we had this season thus far. You know, that could have been a game changer. You know, we had a, another touchdown call back. You know, we missed tackles and gave up a long touchdown run. So there are still things that we need to work on to, to perfect to get better. Like I said, you're going to have, unfortunately, mistakes from time to time, especially with a young team. But we're still getting better. We're still learning. And we still just got to play ourselves in a position so we can be successful. Big picture, you take a look at the playoff standings right now. You're currently fifth, six, seven, and eight are all right there just the game back. Yes. What's the message and mantra to the team over these last three games? You know, our mantra is we want to finish nine and six. We want to go one and zero each week, but you know, if we can finish nine and six, that's going to put us in a good driver's seat. As you know, we played a lot more games than other teams, so other teams still have a full schedule to go, and some of those teams in front of us have to play each other. So there's going to be some fallout from those games as well. So we just want to control our own destiny. If we can finish 9-6, and six, you know, we can put ourselves to have a good position in the playoffs. So we're just competing each week to go 1-0, and but we want to finish 9-6. and six. And To us, you know, that's still a reasonable good record for us. One of those teams that's right on your heels is your next matchup, Green Bay. You've played them and beaten them three times this season. As you get ready for this game, how much can you still look back at the film with all of the roster turnover that there's been the last few weeks? You know, we have to look back and kind of see because they've had some roster changes as well, just like we have. But, you know, leaving, looking at that and we told the guys, you know, at practice, hey, you know, we have, may have beat them three times, but really that does not mean nothing. You look in the world of sports, it's tough to beat anybody two or three times. But to play somebody unprecedented four times, you know, it's tough. And that's just like playing any top team. So this is probably going to be one of the toughest games we play just because, you know, you know what each other's like to do, what their tendencies are. You try to adjust those. But, you know, how much can you adjust and change, you know, playing a team four times? So, you know, we're prepared to go out and try to throw some new wrinkles. But we just have to come out and play like six. We do have a challenge trying to beat a team four times. You've seen a few different iterations of Green Bay. You touched on the roster turnover. Despite that, what are the things that do you think have been consistent and that stand out about the blizzard? You know, they have a good defense and good special teams. You know, their special teams are one of the tops in the league. They had a return for a touchdown again last week. So we know special team-wise we're going to have to tighten up in, in that aspect of it. As well, you know, they have a, a quarterback that's come in that's kind of taken over the last couple games, Brooke, and he's been doing, you know, pretty well for them as well. So we know we have to adjust that. So the basic schemes are going to be there. The basic schemes on both sides of the ball plus special teams are going to be there. This doesn't matter who executes and makes less mistakes. You brought up quarterback Brooke Bowles. Now has five games under his belt, ten touchdowns, doesn't throw a lot of interceptions. How do you try and make him uncomfortable and 
force him into some mistakes. You know, we got to try to you know, disguise our coverages and try to keep things so he cannot get a good pre-snap read. So, you know, we've been doing a pretty decent job of that the last couple of weeks, adjusting, doing some things, uh, adding in some more zones to our, run, excuse me, zones to our uh, man coverage defenses. So we'll do some things, change some things up front a little bit to adjust because you have to. But we're just trying to confuse him best we can, make him hold the ball a little bit longer so our D-line can get to him. Given that it's your last home game, is there a little extra motivation going into this one? You know, it's always motivation, like playing in front of your fans, being the last home game, knowing that we lost our last game, knowing that we have to go out and beat a team four times. So we have a lot of motivation. So we're really going to need, you know, our ninth man fans and everybody in the stands to make a lot of noise and help support us this weekend because it's going to take everybody to get that victory. We need them to make some noise and try to throw them off balance as well. Coach trying to go back above 500, right in the thick of that postseason battle. Given all that, what's the code word for the week? Intelligent. You know, we have to play smart and intelligent football, you know, this weekend and for the next couple of weeks. You know, sometimes we make some silly mistakes and we got to make sure that we play smart, uh, intelligent football to come out with victory. So if we can do that and, and maintain our composure, make sure we're executing the way we need to be. And like I said, not getting involved with the little mental things that go on in the course of a football game, we'll be okay. So we got to be an intelligent team the next three weeks. Looking to be an intelligent team and break through to the postseason. That is your code word of the week. Take that to social media. See if you can win you some buck swag and prizes. Head coach Rod Miller, thanks so much for joining us. As usual, glad to be here. All right, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we'll learn about the Bucks' new field general, Kenyatta Allen. Hey, Bucks fans. If you're planning an outing, birthday, or employee appreciation night, then bring your group out to the Buck Stop for a night of fast-paced, high-scoring football. Your group will receive discounted tickets, options for reserved seating, scoreboard messages, VIP services, swag, and a space to gather during the game. You can also participate in pre-game ceremonies, halftime entertainment, in-game contests, and more. Call 701-595-0771 or visit bismarckbucks.com forward slash tickets. All GA is first come, first serve. We'll see you on the turf. Go Bucks! Everybody needs an off-season, but our announcers have a tough time slowing down. Do you mind if I practice a little bit? Right, I don't really think that. Johnson right. holds, shoots, he scores! Incredible. For the second time today, Brent has jammed the printer. Lowry's third Carmel roll of the day. That's a bold move. And he drains one. Blind squirrel finds a nut. And back to normal. Staying connected is more important than ever. And we're proud to have connected you when it mattered most. Whether it was working remotely at your new home office or providing cutting edge security and connectivity solutions or connecting you to your customers in new ways. More than ever, your local co-op is here for you. Choose local, choose Beck Connect. Indoor football is back at the event center and the Bismarck Bucks season is right around the corner. The team will be fueled and ready to compete on game days thanks to our 2021 food sponsors. Dine with any of our supporting partners and get a free Bucks ticket to any home game in the 2021 season. Great food and free football. Tickets are first come first serve so get yours now. Call 701-595-0771 for more ticket information and go Bucks! Welcome back to the show, everybody. Kenyatta Allen was the fifth different quarterback to suit up for the Bucks this season, this past Saturday against Tucson. The, the Bucks' latest signee comes to Bismarck with a wealth of professional experience, and he's actually run into a few different Bucks along the way. After a stint at Arkansas Baptist College and then at Robert Morris College in Illinois, where he was teammates with Bucks defensive back Deion Carter, Allen went pro in the NAL with Another future buck in offensive lineman, Sterling Clark, on the Maine Monarchs. Allen actually considered joining the Bucks before the season, however, opted to go play in Turkey. After the season in Turkey was canceled, Allen was in touch with Carter and got the ball rolling to get him in a Bucks uniform. Despite just being one game into his time with the Bucks, Allen brings a swagger and confidence to the huddle and his teammates have taken notice. I'm definitely a playmaker. Like, I love to play under pressure. When a play breaks down, I feel like I stand to play. I have a, I'm blessed with a great arm. I feel like I can make every throw. I'm blessed with great feet, so I can feel like I can make defenders miss when a defender try to come attack me or bring me down. 
And I just feel like I've just been gifted to play this position. I feel like every time I step on the field, I'm willing to get my all. Never panicked, never rattled. I mean, he was ready for it. Every time he came to the sideline, he said, guys, we're going to go around and score. And I believed him. And I trust in that guy. I've, been, I've known him since 2018. So, shoot, we're going to lead, rally around. Ken, we're going to get this W this week. Despite never being able to suit up for the BAU Lions in Istanbul, Allen's been able to make multiple stops overseas, including in Poland and Germany. While thrilled to be back in the United States, Allen's experience overseas has helped the young man from Atlanta, Georgia, see what the rest of the world has to offer and learn a couple extra phrases along the way. First off, it's a major blessing to be able to travel the world to do something I love to do. And then just being able to go experience these different environments and different cultures has really like opened up my eyes and just really helped develop me as a person because I have I have meeting great people in these countries, like people I could call on to this day that's considered family whenever I go over there. And Turkish, if you want to tell somebody thank you, you say the shikalur. The shikalur. Yeah, the shikalur. The shikalur, Kenya, Kenyatta. I'm not sure if I said that right, but thank you for the lesson. Time for our final break. When we come back, it's another session of Hurry Up Offense. Hey Bucks fans, if you're planning an outing, birthday, or employee appreciation night, then bring your group out to the Buck Stop for a night of fast-paced, high-scoring football. Your group will receive discounted tickets, options for reserved seating, scoreboard messages, VIP services, swag, and a space to gather during the game. You can also participate in pre-game ceremonies, halftime entertainment, in-game contests, and more. Call 701-595-0771 or visit bismarckbucks.com forward slash tickets. All GA is first come, first serve. We'll see you on the turf. Go Bucks. Everybody needs an off-season, but our announcers have a tough time slowing down. Did you mind if I have to practice a little bit? Right, I don't really think that. Johnson holds, shoots, he scores! Incredible. For the second time today, Brent has jammed the printer. Lowry's third caramel roll of the day. That's a bold move. And he drains one. Blind squirrel finds a nut. And back to normal. Staying connected is more important than ever. And we're proud to have connected you when it mattered most. Whether it was working remotely at your new home office or providing cutting edge security and connectivity solutions or connecting you to your customers in new ways. More than ever, your local co-op is here for you. Choose local, choose Beck Connect. Indoor football is back at the event center and the Bismarck Bucks season is right around the corner. The team will be fueled and ready to compete on game days thanks to our 2021 food sponsors. Dine with any of our supporting partners and get a free Bucks ticket to any home game in the 2021 season. Great food and free football. Tickets are first come first serve so get yours now. Call 701-595-0771 for more ticket information and go Bucks! Welcome back everyone for another session of Hurry Up Offense. This week we're talking offensive lineman, Tory Boyd. Tory, we're gonna go end zone to end zone, see what we can learn about you. Yes, sir. All right, let's get rolling. Go to pregame meal. Uh, pasta. Pasta, this is rapid fire. I'm gonna need you to go a little bit quicker Okay, than chicken that. pasta. <laughs> chicken, oh, it's specific too, I like yeah. it. Ice cream flavor. Uh, strawberry. Superheroes. Uh, Favorite one. Flash. The, fl the Flash is popular, yeah. man. He is killing yeah. it on the Buck squad right now. Yeah. Who Who is most like the Flash? Who's the fastest guy on the team? Is it uh, you? Dre. Dre, Dre. Okay, gotcha. Um, let's get away from the media uh, uh, a little bit. Favorite uh, Favorite TV show? Uh, shoot. Uh, the Flash. <laughs> Marvel <laughs> CW. Uh, fa uh, favorite part about playing in the IFL? Uh, competing the speed of the game is fast. Uh, I know you uh, you went to Howard, right? You went yes, to sir. an HBCU. What what was that experience like? Uh, it was great. It was a lot of parties, but it, <laughs> yeah, it was a great fun experience. You know, I learned a lot about the culture and things like that. So, what'd you major in? Uh, criminal justice, sports management. So, what do you hope to do after football? Uh, be like probably eh, football coach or like work with kids or homeland security. Looks like it sounds like you're gonna have a lot of options. Yes, sir. Now the hurry up offense with Tory Boyd. 
Big thanks to Tori for helping us out this week on Hurry Up Offense. Time to give away some free stuff and reveal our Coach's Code Word winner. And this week it is one Doug Reimer. Doug, congratulations. Keep an eye on your inbox. We'll be getting in touch with you very soon to let you know what you won. Maybe some buck swag prizes will let you know. We've only got a couple of weeks left in the season here. Only a couple more chances to win, so you're going to want to pay attention to the code word for this week, and it is intelligent. You would be intelligent if you took this word to Bucks social media channels, Bismarck Bucks football on Facebook at Bismarck Bucks on Twitter at Bismarck underscore Bucks on Instagram every Wednesday at 630. You know that this is the place to be with Coach Miller talking all things Buck. Bucks looking at the game that was just passed, looking ahead to help us preview the next matchup, and of course, giving us that all important key code word. Intelligent is the word for this week. Before we head out, let's take a quick look at the Bucks' upcoming schedule. Like we said, we are coming down the home stretch. The Bucks have their final home game of the season. They just got a bump from Friday, July 30th to Saturday, the 31st, 7 10 start. It's actually going to be broadcast nationally on stadium as the IFL game of the week. And then the Bucks will close out the regular season with back to back road games at Iowa and at Duke City. That'll do it for this week's show. For our entire Beck News and Beck Sports crew working so hard behind the scenes to make this show possible, I'm David Sugarman. Hope to see you at the Event Center this Saturday when the Bucks try to make it a perfect 4-0 against the Green Bay Blizzard this season. Until then, have a safe week, everybody.